What's going on everybody? I've got another lesson for you today. We're going to spice up our 4-4 four, four grooves with patterns of three. I call this the three against four feel. And I've got a few patterns that I've written for my own music that I'm going to show you, walk you through, and hopefully spark some ideas on how you can use three against four to make your own 4-4 four, four grooves pop. And before we get into it, please don't forget to like the video, leave a comment down below, and go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. And without further ado, let's get into it. So all the patterns we have today are in 4-4 four, four time. And what we're doing are using groupings of three notes, whether that's um, maybe three eighth notes or maybe three sixteenth notes, using patterns that have a repeating um, grouping of three and super imposing it over four four and what ends up happening is it creates some interesting textures with the groupings of three not necessarily lining up perfectly with the downbeats and the bar lines of the four four time and the first pattern that i'm going to show you uh, demonstrates that very well so this is actually a two-parter and again um, i've actually pulled this pattern from uh, a song that I've been working on with my own original project. And this pattern is part of a bridge section to where we have kind of a simmering groove and it builds up into a more full beat, but the entire thing leverages the three against four feel. So part one, what we have in terms of the four in our, in our the part of this that matches with the typical 4-4 four, four feel is the hands. And all we're doing is 16th notes and we're accenting the downbeat. So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, we're going to be doing this on the hi-hat like so. Just single strokes on the hi-hat accenting that downbeat. And we bring in the pattern of three on our kick drum. And all that is, is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So it's a steady kick drum every third beat in the 16th note subdivision. So if we have the kick is gonna be one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. So without the accents, And where this gets interesting is keeping that accent in there, which is a pattern of four notes. And then our kick, which is three. And how that lines up very slowly is like this. So you can hear how the accents on the hi-hat and the kick drum have that sort of interplay with each other where they're not quite lining up, but they form a very cool sound, that three against four sound. So a little faster, sounds like this. Okay, now you can do that all day and uh, it doesn't really doesn't necessarily fit perfectly into four four because with the pattern of three on the kick drum that turns around every third measure and that doesn't really fit neatly into you know typical song phrasings that are you know either four measures eight measures uh, two measures things like that so all we do is add a little turnaround at the end of the second measure of this pattern and to kind of reset the kick drum to land on the downbeat for the next cycle of the groove. I'll show you. Here 
here's that a little faster. All right, so you can hear how that turnaround kind of makes it sound more of like an actual groove rather than like a exercise pattern and contextualizes it like, okay, you know, I can tap my foot to this where it was still in 4-4. Now I'm gonna speed it up a little more and play it with a click so you can get the full context. Now, real quickly, before we move on to the second part of this pattern, make sure you spend some time on the coordination between, especially between your left hand and your foot when you're doing um, the hi-hat accent and notes. And on the notes that your weak hand or your off hand is hitting with your kick drum, make sure those are together, uh, hitting at the exact same time, nice and clean. I've played this so many times and I feel like almost every time I pick it up, I sort of have to retrain myself to do it, uh, to clean that up. That left hand uh, has, a, has a way of kind of getting out of sync. And when those two are perfectly lined up, your off hand and your foot, this groove sounds really clean. So part two, the kick pattern stays the exact same. The pattern of three, the turnaround, everything is the exact same. The only thing that changes is now, instead of doing 16th notes up here on the hi-hat, we're doing eighth notes with the right hand and we're accenting the downbeat of every beat of the four four measure so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so on like this cool and then we're just putting our snare on two and four Okay, so with the kick drum in there. We'll play that even slower and really focus on how that kick is staying constant the whole time. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three until we hit the turnaround. Pretty cool. And once you add the backbeat with the snare and 4-4, four, four, it really becomes a groove and you know something you can bob your head to. So here's that one with the click. Now, before we move on, I'm going to play part one and part two of this pattern to show you how they kind of flow into each other. All right, so the next pattern I have for you is uh, one of my personal favorites. So this pattern is, for the most part, linear. So we're doing groupings of three with turnarounds to land on the downbeats of the four. So we start with an accent on the snare, 
and a double in our right hand on the rack tom. And we alternate the accent between the snare and the kick. So that sounds like this. Now what I just did right there when I ended that is how we turn it around. What's interesting about this pattern is we keep the pattern of three ostinato on the right hand going without skipping a beat. So while the kick and snare pattern does a turnaround, so we land on the downbeat of 4-4, four, four, the pattern of three, the one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, that keeps on going over the bar line. And you'll hear that when we go into the next part of this. Once more. faster. So that's a fun pattern. Once you get that smooth, so much fun to play. And something else, um, if you've got the coordination for it, is to add in the hi-hat foot. That kind of contextualizes it a little bit, gives it gives it a little more, over, little more of a straight pulse that really um, kind of adds some energy and some momentum to the groove. And then also in the full version of this groove, what I do is we have a double on the turnaround um, in the right hand on this high rack tom. When I do a cycle of this groove, I, I will do that turnaround double on the high tom. And then the next time I'll move to the floor tom and I'll alternate between those two. It just adds a little bit of phrasing, a little bit of musicality to it. And that sounds like this. I'll leave the hi-hat out for now. Now here's that full pattern with the click. All right, moving on. So this next one, probably is the toughest from a coordination standpoint and you'll find that a lot of um you know three against four and other types of uh, polyrhythmic or uh, polymetered grooves and patterns tend to feel a little odd at first because um, you know different limbs or you know, different voicings are going over the bar line while you know maybe it, another part like your feet are staying in a very locked in straight 4-4 four, four groove so all that to say be patient when you're working on these and when you're exploring your own ideas doing this 
Uh, a lot of times it can be very helpful to transcribe it either in sheet music or visually in MIDI. So you can kind of see and have a, has a visual reference for the spacing between the notes, what limbs are supposed to hit with each other and which ones aren't. Definitely utilize those tools because there's a lot of brain power that goes into doing completely different times with your different appendages. <clears throat> okay, so back to the next groove. And I'm gonna start with the pattern of three because it is an ostinato the whole way. Not a whole lot to remember here. It's very similar to what we had in the last pattern where we've got the one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, as a double in the right hand. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And we are placing that on our rack tom. And that is gonna be in the 16th note subdivision. So if our quarter note is here, our 316 on the rack tom is gonna to sound like this. So we keep that going steadily over top of what I would describe as a you know pretty standard sounding 4-4 rock groove. So without the right hand, that sounds like this. And I'll give you a straight hi-hat to kind of contextualize that beat a little bit. So that is our kick and snare pattern. You might start to see how this can get a little tricky keeping that going over top of that groove that we just did. And the interesting part about this is that when we get to the end of the groove, the three pattern does not land where it started. So because this doesn't fall evenly with that downbeat on beat one, at the end of the groove, every time you cycle through it, it sounds different. And there's three different variations that occur if you do the math. In the context of the song that I wrote this for, I go through four times and I end up repeating one of the variations. So you'll hear that if you pay close attention, the fourth time around, I end up playing the same thing as I did the first time around. So here's what that whole thing sounds like very slowly. And I will put a crash with my left hand on beat one every time this pattern restarts. I ended it there with just a little fill to mark the end of the phrase from the actual song. But as we were going through that, you probably noticed that the right hand lines up completely differently with everything else that you're doing every time we go through it. 
So that's what makes this very challenging, but also makes it very fun once you kind of get it under your fingers. Just what that sounds like a little bit faster for context. And I'm gonna add the hi-hat foot in there again to contextualize the pulse and give it a little more emotion. And I'm gonna do that in eighth notes. I had a little hiccup in there towards the end. It's a lot to keep track of. So again, take it very slow and be patient with yourself. I've been playing this pattern for months and half the time I still have problems wrapping my brain around it, but it is a ton of fun, so keep at it. All right, so now I'm gonna run through that at a little bit of a higher tempo and I'm gonna leave the hi-hat foot out for now for cleanliness sake. Here it is. Right, so we are at our last pattern and this takes place in like a um, sort of a finale section of the song and what we have is a pattern of three again on the hands everything's kind of in unison so uh, there's no there's no limb or uh, voicing here that's in a straight four four while another is in a pattern of three the whole kit is in three with turnarounds to land on the 4-4 four, four downbeats. So if our quarter note is here, the hand pattern sounds like this. So we're accenting both hands together, um, and then we have a double on the right hand in between them for a pattern of three. China symbol gets the accent. If you don't have a China symbol, just put it on a crash. That's totally fine. And then with each of the ride symbol hits, with each of the doubles, we're adding in our kick drum, like so. So all together, that's This one gets pretty heavy. So that's the bulk of the pattern, but then we add little linear chops to turn us around back to beat one. And that linear chop is just a right, left, kick, kick. Right, left, kick, kick. Up to tempo, you're probably gonna want a double kick pedal for this groove, um, unless you got some insane single pedal double chops, which if you do, props to you, uh, but basically doing a right left with the hands and then a right left with the feet. Like so. Then we add that to this groove to turn it around to make it the whole thing fit in the context of 4-4. Four, four. That sounds like this. And 
then we keep going with the pattern of three again and then add a little pause. So what I'm gonna do is continue incrementally adding to this. With the next measure, we have this. And then I will move where that right, left, kick, kick, turnaround takes place as well. So this whole thing somewhat repeats twice. I'm gonna put the whole transcription down here so you can follow along with what I'm doing. So all together up to this point, we will have this. So at the end of that phrase, we just added a couple tom flams. One more time up to this point, a little bit faster. So hopefully at this point you're getting just a little more comfortable with the sound of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, over top of the four, four time. But we are not quite done with this groove. So we've got one more repetition of One more time slowly, the third pass through this groove. And then we end it with a long linear chop. This switches between the old chop that we were using and then a slightly different version that kind of fits in that pattern of three. How this goes is right, left, right, left, kick, kick. So instead of two hands and two feet, we've got four hands and two feet. So instead of this, We're going to do this. Oops. We're going to play that new chop four times, and then we're going to play the old one twice to turn it around and land on beat one of the four, four. Very slowly, that sounds like this. And then we keep going. So a little bit faster. So much fun. Then we're gonna wrap it all up by doing the old chop three times. So that's right, left, kick, kick, right, left, kick, kick, right, left, kick, kick. Except we're gonna move it down the toms and then end with a double stop on the snare and the floor tom. And what that sounds like very slowly is this.
So that chop all together sounds like this. Here's the whole thing at a moderate tempo all together this time. Now here's that whole thing again, up to speed with the click. Okay, that's all I have for you. And I really hope you enjoyed those patterns, but even more than that, I hope it sparked some ideas of how you could possibly add the three against four feel to your own playing. You know, whether that's similar to ways I did it or even like stealing those patterns and orchestrating it differently on the kit. I just hope we got some juices flowing and, you know, kind of maybe opened your ears and eyes to some more possibilities on the kit. And hopefully this armed you with some new tools that you can use to spice up that same old 4-4 that you've been playing for years. So happy drumming, and I will see you in the next one.